Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Two Dudes Podcast. I am Rick, and today I am joined by Big Show. Ryan, what's good, man? What's going on, bro? How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, I can't complain. You know, just another day in paradise. Uh, Kevin is not with us again today. Slacker. No, I'm just teasing him. He's handling his fatherly duties right now, taking care of the girls, getting them off to soccer practice. Uh, so we will probably see him uh, again as soccer winds down. But right. I'm not going solo today. You're with me. How do you feel about that? I feel good. I appreciate the invite. Uh, it's not a problem. You know how it is. You can come on each and every episode all the way to the end of time if you want. It's yes, all sir. good. Um, <clears throat> now, we got six topics today. And... The first one I'm going to start off with, uh, it's a health and fitness thing. 12, the 12 best ways to lose weight after 50. And yes, that means us, us old folk. That's, that's specifically for us. Uh, I know a lot of the younger people that listen, they will probably not even care about this topic. But let me tell you one thing I've learned. Your time is coming. Heck yeah, it is. Father time is undefeated. Ain't it though? All right. So I'm going to go through these 12 with you, Big Show, and you tell me, you know, what you think about each one of them. Uh, the first one, real simple, eat more fruits and veggies. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'll eat an apple, I'll eat an orange, but I struggle with vegetables. I do. I what do we call salad rabbit food that's so right i i uh i know i can do better and th the sad thing is heather has a garden i got no excuse so i need to work on that i'm definitely okay with the fruits i'm with you on the vegetables uh but i have and I, you get these at uh sam's club but it's your fruits and a pill. You take three of these a day. Hmm. And then they also have the veggies. So it gives you your daily veggie intake via three pills a day. There's really no taste to them. That's what I was giving you. If you, can't get, yeah, if you can't get your veggies in, you know, that's a good substitute. Okay. I might have to try that then. Now, the second thing is... Use all those uh, beans you bought. And, and I guess they're talking about different kinds of beans, kidney beans, lima beans, uh, hell, even pork and beans. You know, a, a lot of people don't eat enough beans and they are packed with fiber, protein, and other nutrients. And I think I'm pretty moderate on that. So that's nothing that I have to specifically concentrate on agree with you um beans i'm i'm pretty steady on that uh my problem is then i add the salt pork and the butter and all the cornbread with it you know yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so you know what one one was healthy ish is now not so much anymore exactly and speaking of the cornbread we will get to that later on the list um <laughs> the number three though is befriend your bathroom scale and this is one that maybe a little over a year ago, maybe a little bit more than that. I started uh, stepping on the scale more. I try to do it once every week and the same time every week. I'll do it every Sunday morning. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to gain weight, lose weight. The whole purpose is to step on the scale to make sure that you're regular. And what I mean by regular, plus or minus five to seven pounds is okay. And that's even when you're trying to lose weight. You're not going to just steadily lose and you're not going to steadily gain. You're going to have plateaus. But mm -hmm. the whole point is to step on the scale to make sure you know where you are. That way it don't creep up on you one day. I agree. Um, I don't like my scale. So, you know, we're not, <laughs> we're, we're not on speaking terms right now. Uh, but I get you. Yes, you definitely should have a regimen, a set schedule to do that. And, you know, once a week, you don't want to weigh yourself every day. 
because your body retains certain water and things like that. And like you said, but you know, five to seven pound average over a week, that's that sounds about right. Yeah. Either direction. Yeah, either either direction. I mean, and don't be intimidated by it. And, you know, even like I said, if you're trying to lose and one day you're up two pounds and you're like, well, I've been working out. It's just the body being the body. It's going to try yep. to uh, fight back, survive. You're in survival mode when you cut calories. So, yes, sir. And, and that leads up to number four, which is focus on your food. Um, like you were talking about cornbread and all that. Um, I know for a fact I need to eat healthier. I need to cut back on all the breads and I need to cut back on sugar and starches. And, you know, I love my sweets. I'm not going to lie, but I'm in the running season. I need to, you know, get my diet back under control. And that's the other thing. When I say diet, I'm just talking about what I eat daily. Not that I'm. Oh yeah. Your daily intake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I don't believe in the quote unquote diet. Because what are the first three letters in the word diet? Exactly. You're going to exactly. kill yourself trying to get into shape. Take your time with it. Let it happen naturally. Um, if you eat right, you work out or you exercise or you do what you got to do, you'll get where you want to be. You think you need to cut back on anything or add anything? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I'm a big dude. I need to cut back on everything. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I don't know all your, your, you know, your 12 steps there, but, you know, overall is mindset for me. You know, if you don't have your mind in the right place, it doesn't matter. You know, when you scale, it doesn't matter what you put in or don't put in your body. If your mind's not right, you know, you're, you're not going to get the success that you want. So that's where I am at in my fitness area. Well, now that you talk about fitness and everything, number six was mix up your workouts. I know a lot of people, they do the same thing every day, every day. And then they wonder, well, everything's slowing down. It's not working the way it used to. You got to mix it up. Sometimes you run, sometimes you go for a walk, sometimes you'll do aerobics or whatever. You got to find more than one thing that you like. And, and if you get two or three things, at least you can alternate and that's better for your body and that's better for your goals. Um, I agree. as a runner, I had to get out of that mindset of just running. I've actually had to get my little behind in the weight room and that makes a difference actually. Um, shoot, getting under that squat rack has helped my runs. So mm -hmm. My wife, she's also a runner. She loves the squat rack. She loves it. Things that I wish I had did 20 years ago. But, hey, it's never too late. <laughs> That's right. As long as the time's still, still ticking and your heart's still beating. Exactly. Now, number seven is discover a new way to eat. And what they mean by that is here's a different way to think about how much you eat. Um the consultant for the physician said that um, it read, they recommend that, uh, what does it say? Without my glasses on, I got to bend up here. Stop eating when you're no longer hungry, not when you're full. There's a problem because if I have a cheesecake in front of me, I'm going to stop eating when I'm full. This is true. I also heard that. Um, it's wise to drink a glass of water before the meal and then eat because that helps, you know, you get, you get that full sensation faster. So you're not overeating. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really not the person to speak on about how to lose weight because I am not there yet. I can tell you what not to do to be as big as I am. I mean, I can do that part, you know, the, the mindless eating, you know, the sitting in front of the TV, the bag of chips, you know, whatever. You're focus, right. The TV you is not your friend. Your, no. When you said focus on your food, that's what you need to do. There's a time to eat. That's why they created the kitchen table or the dinner table. That's where you should eat. You shouldn't eat in front of the TV. 
you know, because you'll you will just mindless eat. Now, here's one that I have not tried yet. It, it's number eight. Try intermittent fasting. That one's hard for people that like to eat. I'm not gonna lie. Would I want to miss that on Facebook too? I don't know if I want to miss breakfast or lunch, or breakfast and lunch, or mm-hmm. lunch and dinner, or something like that. Uh, you know uh, that <laughs> FOMO when it comes to food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a microcosm of my day. I'm up at three forty-five a.m. and I'm in the gym at four a.m. I want to work out for thirty to forty-five minutes, or I'm on the track running for thirty to forty-five minutes, and then shower and be at work by five a.m. Uh, my first break is either seven or seven thirty. And I immediately go for breakfast. Got to. Because of that, I've built up quite an appetite. So by 7.30, I need my breakfast. And then, you know, I'm working hard until about noon and it's time for lunch. I need that lunch. And there is no way I'm going to skip dinner. Because by the time I get home, I do everything else that I got to do. I'm not saying it can't be done. But I'm saying that I'm not ready to do it. Right. (laughs) Now, the ninth thing that they have here is start a yoga practice. I'm not going to lie. I have done some yoga and it's not bad. And I did have that mindset. Why would I want to do some damn yoga? Yada, yada, yada. But once I did it. It's definitely harder than it looks. Yes, it is. Very. But you feel so good after. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, it is something that one day soon I will get back into and hopefully I can, you know, keep with it and, and, and build on that because the results are amazing. Now, when was the last time you did, uh, any yoga? Oh, five or six years ago. Um, it's actually when my wife first got into her health kick and we were doing the P90X program. Mm. And one of those days is a 90 minute yoga session. So I remember the P90X program. Um, that's not a bad program. It's a great if, program. If you're, if you're dedicated to do that. Yeah. If yes. you, you're in shape to begin with or dedicated to put in the time. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a beginner program. <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, that's if I'm correct that's Tony Horton Mm -hmm. yeah I still follow him on Instagram that dude is still ripped and still in shape oh yeah and he's He's like what 60 60 something yeah Yeah, he's 60 something yeah I want to be like him when I grow up for real but I got to start somewhere (laughs) now going into number 10 it says check what you're taking and what they mean by that is um, two things, um, medicines and for people that are trying to build muscle or whatever, they will take, uh, certain supplements and weight gain and protein powders, uh, Mm -hmm. so they can get bigger. Obviously protein powders and stuff like that are loaded with calories and the fat will sneak up on you. If you're not putting in the work, if you're trying to bulk up medication wise, um, like me, for one, I take my blood pressure medicine, man, it blood pressure medicine. When I first started taking it, it slows you down. It really slows you down and you'll put on a few extra pounds because of it. So and it's not just those medicines. There's other medicines. I don't, I don't take anything else, but I've heard stories about medicine changing your physiology. So those are things that you have to watch out for. I don't know if you take any meds. I do have blood pressure medication, so I do take that. So, so, so you know how it is. I, unfortunately, I do. Yeah. So. And now when you get to the 11th thing, swap juicy snacks for nuts. Yeah, that goes right along with what I said earlier. If there's a cheesecake in front of me, I'm probably going to eat the cheesecake. 
I do have to learn, and I, I mean learn, to eat healthier and, and to be able to get that intestinal fortitude to push back the plate of stuff that I know is not as good for me. The, uh, I, you know, almonds, I love almonds and cashews. So that's, that's not a problem for me. Um, pr the problem is, is all the different flavorings they put on those said nuts to make you want to eat them. I was getting that, ready to say that. that doesn't make it any better for you. When you said almonds and cashews, yeah, I had some of that, uh, last week, but it was in the form of, uh, trail mix so we yeah, had everything you know. else in there too right you know um i forget who does all the blue blue diamond yes they have all the different flavors of, of almonds and things like that and yeah if if there's if they have whatever they have in the smokehouse i'm buying whatever's <laughs> on the shelf you know it just and i know that the flavor is not I mean, you're still getting the benefits of the nuts, but you're, the, the, the stuff they put on them is not really helpful. Yeah. So the bottom line is those are the 12 things that you can do to, you know, kickstart better health. Now, y'all have listened to us, so you know that, you know, we got a ways to go. We got some things that we got to do. And I would venture to say that for everybody that listens to this podcast, at least one of those things everybody can work on. Oh, yeah. And I, I think you should have probably add a 13th one is get an accountability buddy, you know, uh, that's you, a good you, one. you can't do it by yourself and you're going to give yourself an out. If it's just you find you somebody that's going to hold you accountable that you put, you know, that you respect their opinion. And when you're slacking off and they smack you upside the head, you know, <laughs> that we'll get to later. Uh, that's what you need. <laughs> hey, yeah, a different kind of accountability, but yeah. I yes, sir. You. Now, moving on real quick. Uh-huh. This one kind of hurt. A uh, TikToker who used to work at Cracker Barrel in Arizona has revealed that a code word that some of her fellow employees allegedly use to refer to Black customers. And it I had says, to look this one up. You did? Okay, so you yeah, know that... The waitress used to complain so much uh, that <clears throat> Canadians were in her section. Wow, that was the code word, Canadians. Mm -hmm. And where where was the city and state at again? Uh, it was in Arizona. It doesn't say the city in Arizona. Yeah, I don't see the city. It just says Arizona. Hmm. but it's despicable yeah i mean it's despicable i mean and i mean you can't really expect much from a company named cracker barrel so i mean that's true um, it's just um it, it, it sucks is, because it's stupid you know that that's that's not the uh the only place that does it there's oh there's, no and and there's, there's plenty different of things, different ways. Yeah. Stuff. Oh yeah. So, as far as we've come as a society, there's always those two steps back, and sometimes we do it to ourselves. Sometimes it gets done to us. Um, it's definitely, uh, I I'm with you. The two steps back. It's you would think. Our generation learned from our older generation that we would be able to teach our younger generation how to react differently and treat people differently. And it's, it feels like that we're, we're losing that battle. Yeah. Um, what really hurts is I'm noticing with the younger generation, I don't want to say they're getting away with more. They're straight not being taught it. Mm -hmm. uh, too many things are being let slid and things that are done wrong are quote unquote acceptable now and you know I don't know the whole situation at this Cracker Barrel restaurant I don't know if there was more than one person doing it but as I mentioned before 
if there's one somewhere, there's another somewhere else. And now the the only thing that really that that bothers me on the flip side of that is the lady that's now reporting it, who no longer works for Cracker Barrel. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you say something while you was collecting a paycheck? Yes. Why did you wait till after that said relationship or whatever is over that now you want to put them on blast? Why didn't you do that beforehand? What stopped you from doing it then? Yeah, now it's that, too, that's too that's late. how you make change. Yeah, Not after the um, fact. I get the feeling hers was more of a, hey, let me put this on TikTok to let y'all know about it. Not really, let me put this on here to inform people of the things that are going on. And I told you that she wasn't working there anymore, and that's why she yeah, did it. Yeah. So um maybe one of these days, one of these generations will get around this. And if not our kids, our kids, kids, kids won't have to go through this. Sunday night, Samuel L. Jackson received his first Oscar, and he received it from Denzel Washington. Well um, overdue. Yes. Yeah, and I've tried to tell people that, you know, Sam Jackson is a damn good actor. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. I know he gets typecast in a lot of things because, you know, he's the foul mouth guy that's cussing and shooting. And But that's okay. If that's what the script requires, he and can I pull it off. And I think that, that he, not so much anymore, but he was looped into that role, if that makes sense. Yeah. That type of person. Um, just comical things that I think of is like at the end of, uh, uh, the Marvel movie, the Avengers, uh, where everybody was disappearing the first Thanos movie or whatever, you know, yeah. was it, where he's looking at things, he's like, mother, and you know, that's how he's disappearing. You know, they, they play off of it, who he is, you know what I mean? Um, I think the thing that bugged me most I, is oh, it's, oh, going back to that Marvel movie. If, if, if you just look at the Marvel movies, for example, and, and, this has this goes down with great actors when you're a great actor you are that role much yes. to the fact that robert downey jr is iron man you can't replace him and i know that they eventually are going to want to do another x-men movie but hugh jackman was wolverine mm -hmm. they can't replace nick fury that's sam jackson no different than you can't replace t'challa exactly and they were mm -hmm. ryan klug was like i'm not even gonna try so when they do the sequel, it won't even have a replacement in there. No. Uh, I think the part of the that's, that's disappointing on the Samuel L. Jackson Award is that it was an honorary Oscar. He didn't, like, win it for a particular role. And it wasn't televised. That's the one thing I hate about the Oscars. It is a long, long, long show. Yet 25% of the Oscars that are given out don't get televised. I hate that. But that's like a lifetime achievement award. You know what I mean? They do that for the Grammys. They do that for the other award shows. Yeah. He should have got his, as much as the slap across the world happened. Yeah. Mr. Jackson should have got his five minutes of spotlight. Let's everybody give him his kudos worldwide just not in that room you know what i mean i had to see it on youtube or something like that for me to appreciate the actual moment you know um but yeah i, I couldn't be more ecstatic and to get it from denzel is, is is awesome yes that that is a big deal right there who better to get it from you know exactly exactly and, and it yeah i know it's an honorary award but hey he earned it oh he most definitely it. I mean, I can think of quite a few movies where he should have been nominated, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you go back to, what was it, 20 years ago, A Time to Kill. Mm, oh, yeah. He, he should have got Most it definitely. then. And um, I'm a big uh, Tarantino fan, so all the movies that Samuel L. Jackson played in and those, um, like the, I forget the character's name, but in the movie The Hateful Eight, he played a phenomenal yeah. character in that, you know. Yeah, he did. Um, and you know, the, Django the, is the a problem. Great movie. The problem with the, those movies, The Hateful Eight, and Django, there's so many characters. How do you oh, nominate yeah. someone for so a, good in those. A, a, yeah. yeah, how do you nominate one person out of that? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, most so definitely. I mean, 
But yeah, if I'm you really, really think for... about it, you can't really name more than one or two bad Samuel L. Jackson movies. I don't even think I could name a bad one. I mean, really, you would have to bring it to my attention. Everything that I've seen him in, I really like. I can't really think of a bad movie. That's true. I mean, I'm trying to think of one now, and I can't. Uh... I mean, maybe Star Wars The Phantom Menace, but that's just because that whole movie sucked. <laughs> uh, except for the lightsaber fight at the end. True, true, true <laughs> that. But, you know, I'm just saying, other than that, I can't really. And he was kind of a side character in that, but I can't really think of a bad movie that he played in. No. So hey, but if you guys action. can, let us know. Yeah, definitely. Um, Y'all know how we do. I haven't uh, given the uh, email address in a while, but if you got any questions, comments, always, you know, hit us up at the two dudes podcast at yahoo.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you just leave a comment in the comment section, like share and subscribe because that's how we beat that YouTube algorithm. That's right. The slap man, I am. World. I'm all over the board on this, my friend. I am too, but at the same time, all right, let's do this. Everybody knows what happens. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. Now, if she loses, he can't win. <laughs> <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please. Lord! Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh. Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. My wife's name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. That was a uh, greatest night in the history of television. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. You can't do that in this world, man. You can't do that in this world, man. Arsenio, they got rules. They got rules. Like, he has a rule. The bass player, he got a rule. He got to wax his head every morning. That's a rule. <laughs> He follows the rules, man. He follows the rules. Oh, these are jokes. Come on. <laughs> See, you got too into the characters and got hurt. <laughs> first things first, I want to make a case for Chris, and then I want to make a case for Will. Because I'm not taking sides on it. I see all the angles. I want everybody else to decide. So before you do that, I want to ask you this. Who do you blame? Who do I blame overall? Yes. Probably Will. I would have to say Will because, and, and I know the old adage, there's a time and a place. That wasn't it. Oh, I totally agree with you. But I'm going to go one step further. My blame is going to be on Jada. And mm. we will discuss after you go ahead and throw your, your pros and cons for both Will and Chris. Okay. All right, let me start with Chris. He wasn't just some Joe Blow that has done some acting and he's hosting the awards. He's a comedian. <clears throat> what do comedians do? They roast people. Right before he got into <laughs> Jada, he was already talking to Javier Bardem and his wife, Penelope Cruz, who are both nominated. And he's like, Javier, if she loses, you, you can't, can't win. win. That's right. That's not a bad thing. That's not a knock. I mean, that's that's comedy. And yes, I understand. 
Jada has alopecia. She's kind of insecure about her head. But I'm going to that. Really I'm gonna get to that? that in a minute. I'm going to get to that in a minute, though. Okay. Because, yeah, when we talk Jada. But finishing out with Chris, <clears throat> he could have ripped her a thousand different ways as a comedian. All oh, he yeah. did was make the G.I. Jane 2 reference, which was a damn good movie, by the way. And very good movie. Demi Moore, very sexy lady. Jada Pinkett, very sexy lady. I am a bald man, and I can't pull off sexy. They can't. <laughs> so uh, rounding out with Chris, with, with Chris Rock, he's a comedian doing what comedians do. You find something about somebody, and you make a joke of it. And that's all it is, is a joke. It's in good, clean fun. It wasn't demeaning, and it wasn't demoralizing. Not in my eyes. If I was the guy on front row and I got made fun of, hey, I'm laughing with you. I would say the joke didn't generate or, or didn't originate from a demeaning or disrespectful origin. It didn't. No, I, I, no, I, I would, I would agree that. But uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut well, you. Well, no, no. I mean from the GI Jane two reference. He's referencing a movie. You're at the Oscars. He's the host of the Oscars. But he's I referencing mean, the movie because of her hairstyle. Yes, and, and that's and, the only thing that makes that joke relevant exactly it didn't have anything to do with alopecia or anything like right. that and as a matter of fact if you have anything to do with movies <clears throat> whether you're writer director producer at the moment he said that not only were you laughing but you were kind of thinking damn they really could do a second movie and she could be in it and it could work so chris handled that perfectly especially after will got up and hit him he still handled everything perfectly, finished out the night perfectly, and, and didn't retaliate at all. So I give props to him. You want to uh, speak on Chris before I get to Will? Yes. Um, I, am, I agree with you uh, 100% on almost everything that you said. Um, Chris handled himself and the situation professionally. Not necessarily perfectly. Okay. Okay. Um, I I think that for him to do to, to retaliate back physically was that was not the right time, obviously, and that was not the right time for Will to do what he did. But we'll get to that anyway. But I think I have to give I have to give Chris his props for not even verbally coming back because that part right after it when he said. You know, this is the best night of television. And he was, and he goes, he was like, oh, I could, uh, uh, you know, he, there were some entanglement jokes that were going to come out of his mouth, you know. Yeah. You know, all sorts of stuff that was about to, and he reeled that in and, and did what he was supposed or should have done. I do think that he was mistreated by the Oscar people themselves because he looked at the people on the side of the stage going, like, are we still continuing here? Like, nothing, y'all just going to let this play out? But Chris, you're right. I, I have to agree with you 100%. He did everything he needed to do professionally. Yeah. Now, here's the thing about Will Smith. As soon as the joke rolled off <laughs> of uh, Chris's tongue, you kind of saw Will chuckle. You kind of saw Jada get mad. The camera then, then went off of uh, Jada and you saw Will looking at her before he got up to make his move. This is the part that I don't like. If he was immediately upset and went up there, that's one thing. You kind of chuckled too, bro. So you kind of got that it was a joke and you have a comedy background too. So at that point, everything is still professional. When you make it personal, that's more than it has to be. And, and, and he's the one that made it personal, not Chris Rock. Um, <clears throat> finishing out with Will, I've already said there's a time and a place and a way to handle things. What he did 
was neither. He should not have got up. He did. Should not have struck another man, which he did. On TV, in front of thousands of people in the auditorium, millions of people across the world. Once you do that, there's no taking it back. But then he took it a step further when he sat back down and started to cuss Chris out. Don't put, don't put my wife's name in your MF in mouth, you know, whatever he said. And Will was wrong on several counts. And I think he made himself look even more like an ass 15 minutes later when he got his award and he started talking about being a vessel of love. And his apologies were to everybody except Chris. I didn't agree with any of that. And now I'm going to finish it out by saying that a lot of people are, are online saying he did the right thing defending his wife. It's one thing to defend your wife, but it's how you go about it. He didn't go about it the right way. I agree. The, the, first of all, I don't know personally Chris Rock's and Will Smith's personal relationship. I don't know if there's an outstanding beef because, you know, if you search online back in 2016, Chris Rock had some jokes about him and Jada when he was actually doing hosting the Oscars then because mm. that was when Jada and Will uh, were boycotting the Oscars because no black nominees were nominated that year. Okay. And basically Chris said something to the fact about, you know, them boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. You know, I wasn't invited, you know, type of thing. Funny joke, hilarious. Okay. But that was back in 2016. We have 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21. Here we are, March of 2022. I don't know, I mean, because I'm, I'm not, first of all, I don't have the time nor the patience or the want to to go back and research how many jokes that Chris Rock actually said about the Smith family, right? Right. But I don't know exactly what happened. Or between those two, I don't know if that was an outstanding. And I think at that particular moment, before, let me, let me stop. Will Smith is a broken man. He has mental issues. He needs mental health. His problem is Jada Pinkett. She put that man through the ringer on national TV more than once. Checked his manhood more than once. And he's under that pressure, that, that, that public pressure of everybody looking at going, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I think it's no different than somebody creating, you know, if I, if, if saying a fat joke about me, you know, we're joking around and somebody that I know that I'm friends with, you know, you know, says some fat, creates a fat joke about me. Yeah. Right. I'm going to laugh because I'm with the group, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to take offense to it. The difference is, is that my offense is why am I going to be mad at you for saying that to me when it's my problem? I'm the one that made myself this way. You know what I mean? Right. So I think that with all of that other stuff that's happened in the past, that when Will looked at his woman and see that she was emotionally hurt, that's when that mental side of whatever he's got inside of him kind of snapped and he reacted the way he reacted. We all know that's not the way to react. We all, we all know that. And I'm going to lead into Jada here a little bit, too. This is okay. where Jada should have grabbed Will before he got up and protected her man from embarrassing himself in front of the, all those people in that place and the national audience or the worldwide audience that was watching. Marriage is a two-way street. My wife is going to fight for me. She's going to battle for me. She's going to protect me just as much as I protect her. And some women are more fierce. You know, I don't necessarily want to get in a squabble with my wife. She she plays dirty. Okay. <laughs> uh, so in my mind, 
Jada should have done something to protect her man from that issue. She could see, she knows him more than anybody, better than anybody. I personally think she used, kind of pushed him to do what he did. Now, I could be completely off base, but that's just my, my two cents for what it's worth. She had the, it's not like he got up immediately and did something. Like you said, he laughed, he waited. Hell, even Chris Rock was like, oh, it's a good, it was just a little joke. You know, that wasn't even a bad joke. And before Will Smith got up. That's right. So it took it a nanosecond for, for Will to even physically get up and react. I'm pretty sure Jada could have stopped that and should have stopped that. I think she wanted that to happen. In my personal opinion. I agree. I think Will Smith needs help. He needs professional help. And there's so many celebrities that you think are great that wind up taking their own life. I mean, we'll just look at Robin Williams as an example. Nobody would have known that that man was fighting those demons. That's true. Will Smith is showing his demons to you on live television. His inner circle needs to get him help. Yeah, I mean, if you've read some of the excerpts out of his book, oh my God, and you know they've had the uh, the whole entanglement situation. I mean, lately, his whole life has just been thrown out there in front of everybody to dissect and uh, everybody put their two cents in on what is and what should be. So I know that that can't be good for somebody's mental health. And when you say that Jada, whether it be directly or indirectly, is a negative influence on him, I agree with you 100%. Because there are so many things, not just Sunday night, but there's so many things that she could have done differently in their entire relationship yeah. And that would keep things from coming to where they are now. The, personally, as a couple, they just got too much of their shit out in the open. That's why. Right. And it's, and I mean, they, I may have read things wrong. From what I understand, they have an open marriage, an open relationship. They can have relations outside of each other. That right there in itself is a union that's not yoked. That's they're not they're not together as a team. They're always going to be button heads for whatever reason. And then you and go I've back to that. I've always hated that term, open relationship. Yeah. If you have an open relationship, that's just like saying, "Today well, I want to be married to you. Tomorrow I don't want to be married to exactly. you. Exactly. Next day we'll exactly. get married. Yeah. I mean, if you go back and look at that video of when they were actually going through the entanglement issue. Will Smith was broken emotionally right there for you to see. She didn't bat an eye. And no. she she even went to the point of saying, I had an entanglement with this guy instead of saying, I was we were sleeping together. You know, I yeah. had a relationship, you know, a physical relationship. She wanted to sugarcoat it and all this other crap, you know. That to me, until will separate himself from jada he's not gonna be who he is striving to be that vessel of love that he was talking about and i get and you know you were talking about his uh <clears throat> his apology that he didn't mention chris rock i don't think that apology at that time he should have said anything to chris rock via that way he, he was addressing the people in front of him and the academy that he just got the award from. He should immediately got off stage and walked backstage and apologized to Chris Rock man to man. Yeah. That's what he should have done. Now, I don't know. I know I've seen uh, they both put out statements yesterday apologizing to one another, you know, which yeah, I, I don't think that. Chris Rock owes him an apology. Uh, maybe for, hey, I'm sorry that my joke offended your wife type of thing. But, mm -hmm. you know, these are jokes. I'm a comedian, you know. You And where do we draw the I line with comedians? I'm sorry for all the other comedians that are going to exactly. be doing things like that. That's what you I was going to say, because where do we draw the line? What, 
what can they what can they and can they not talk about now right and i mean would chris rock have i mean would will smith have gotten up and smacked dave Chappelle? no would he have smacked <laughs> cat williams no would he have smacked kevin hart i don't think he would have smacked kevin hart no you know uh you damn sure know if bernie was alive he wasn't smacking him no you know so he had he chose the right person to smack <laughs> that night yeah you know um and 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 then i go back to chris rock when i said he handled everything professionally but not perfectly now i go into my self-defense mode my martial arts instructor mode you mm -hmm. know as soon as somebody puts their hands on you all bets are off there is no uh you know turn the other cheek i am not biblical <laughs> you know i am not from the bible you know uh you can apologize to the lord afterwards i'm gonna arrange the meeting that's kind of like my <laughs> mindset all right that's my I like mindset. that uh but <clears throat> you know don't don't start it but if it's started finish it that's kind of how i raise my kids and how i train my students and things like that um but Chris Rock did what he was supposed to do. And if he would have reacted physically, it would have been a lot worse. It really would have been a lot worse. Yeah. Uh, so he did, he, he absolutely 110% did the right thing. Um, but if I was Will, I'd be sleeping one eye open. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. Will needs a little bit of help. <laughs> I don't know who it would be that would reach out to him and say, Hey, you need to talk about it. You need to see somebody about it. You need to do something about it. It just really depends on who's all in his inner circle. And that's the you problem know, well, with a lot of celebrities. Denzel come up to his defense and Tyler Perry, I think, you know, that during a commercial, they showed something like that. You know, those are the guys that need to put, hey, you know, and maybe they are, you know, we don't know. Yeah, I mean. Somebody needs to, though. You really don't want to take sides on any of it because there, there's so much that could have happened so differently if just one chain of events had uh taken place so Sorry. i'm not sitting up here saying you know it's all on will smith i'm definitely not saying it's all on chris rock he's doing out of the three will chris and jada chris is the one that's least guilty in all this because he's simply doing his job his oh, job yeah, was hosting definitely. his job was comedy the remark probably didn't hit right with them but name me a comedian that's hit right on every single joke they've told right and will should have said something afterwards put him to the side during commercial something he didn't need to do what he did if and it was you you mentioned all the comedians. If it was Eddie Murphy, would Will have got up? I, I mean, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I don't mean, think he would. That's what makes me think there's something else underlying between mm -hmm. that relationship between Chris Rock and Will Smith. There, obviously, Will Smith fe felt comfortable enough with himself physically to walk up on that stage and smack a grown ass man across the face you have to have some sort of there has to be something underlying there and, and when you talk about comfort if jada is easily offended like that and not comfortable with her own self what could she have done differently if you're not comfortable with the hair thing you're in hollywood they got wigs on every street um you've you've been out and about ever since you shaved your head off and it's never been an issue until now right um once you make the, the issue public of what you're going through somebody that says it, you, you you really have no no reason to be upset you know what i mean because you're putting right. it out there for everybody to know anyway so i don't know and again it was very, a bad look. Very, very attractive lady. So she 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 can make bald look sexy. She shouldn't oh, yeah. feel any kind of way about that. Um obviously you're one of the Hollywood elite. 
you're sitting on the front row at the Oscars. So you're not doing too bad in life. So now on a side note, what did you hear that they're talking about the Academy may pull that Oscar from Will Smith? Take it back. I have not did heard that. that? <clears throat> um, this is what I'll say about that then. Why? Why pull it? I agree. It's a separate thing. He earned that it, from his role. The role and the incident are two separate things. The only thing that I can say is if they pull Will Smith's Academy Award, they need to pull Harvey Weinstein's as well. Agreed. <laughs> All right. Let's uh let's go to something a lot lighter here as All we right. get ready to close it out. Let's talk sports, particularly the NFL, particularly in the NFL, the AFC West. And when I say the AFC West, I mean all four teams. They are making moves. Denver got Russell Wilson. Uh, the Los Angeles Chargers got a few defensive players. The Raiders got Devontae Adams. The Chiefs lost Tyreek Hill, but they got Juju Smith-Schuster and um, Marquez Valdez-Scandling from Green Bay. So I know a lot of times – on this show, me and Kevin have said the AFC West is one of the toughest divisions in football. It's looking like this year the AFC West will be one of the toughest divisions in football. You've been yeah, keeping on up paper, on that? They look stacked, man. On paper, the, all four teams look stacked. <clears throat> um, now, I take issue with the prognosticators because they're doing the same thing they did the last two years. They're trying to say that the Chargers are the class of the league. They're the upstarts. They're the ones that make – the Chargers have done nothing these last two years. Did the Chargers go to the playoffs last year? No, they didn't. They got beat on the last game of the season, didn't make the playoffs. So, you know, show me something the Chargers can do first and then talk about them making that leap to the next level. Uh, the other thing that – upsets me yes i'm a raider fan and it sickens me how these prognosticators constantly downgrade us okay so we're gonna finish dead last again in the afc the last couple of years we haven't finished last so give us some props we went to the playoffs last year and that was without a coach without our receiver so i'm thinking what do we got to do and now they're also saying kansas city is dead in the water. How? Yes, I understand Tyreek Hill is very fast. You lose him, but you get two other guys that are extremely quick and a boatload of draft picks. If you ask me, the team that's on the outside looking in is Denver. Yeah, they got Russell Wilson, but they got Russell Wilson on the tail end of his career. Still not a bad quarterback. But no, nah, he's not a bad quarterback. Uh, uh oh, did I lose you? I think I did. They are set, they are set completely. Uh, you know, with the coach, the coach is going to be a great asset to you guys. Devontae, Carr's going to look like a different quarterback throwing to Devontae Adams. And you have Waller still as your tight end, right? Yeah. Who's your second wide receiver? Renfro. Renfro. There you go. And then Jacobs is your running back. Yeah. O-line's pretty decent. And on defensively, I mean, you guys got um, Chandler Jones me, from Arizona. Max Crosby's there. Uh, yeah, Crosby. Max Crosby. I mean, man, the Raiders are going to be good. They're going to be good. Um, I would say Chargers number three, Broncos in the basement. I can see that. That's kind of where that. I see it. And whoever comes out of the AFC West is going to be bloody. They're going to be tired. They're going to be broken. They're going to be bruised. Yeah. And I can honestly say, I mean, I obviously things can change once it all starts and it goes down. 
I don't see an AFC West team being in the championship game. Really? I just think they're going to be too beat up, beating up each other. I can see that. I will take it a step I mean, and you look at Kansas City, they still going to have to play Buffalo again. They still going to have to play Cincinnati again. You know, and that's on top of playing the Raiders twice, the Chargers twice, the Broncos twice, you know. Um, I think, and, 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 and you'll probably think I'm crazy for saying this, but you get three wild cards this year. I think all three of them are going to be AFC teams, AFC West teams, excuse me. I can see that. But, but you got three wild card teams last year. But not all out of the same division. No, I don't think you will. I think the see, most you're going to get is two. Last year, there was a chance of uh, Vegas Oakland and San and, Diego. Yeah, getting in. Or, sorry, Vegas and, and San Diego. If they would have tied, that he kept the Steelers out. Yeah. But and I think that would have put, put the Chargers at Arrowhead instead of Philadelphia or instead of Pittsburgh. Yeah, it would have. But um, you know as what? As a Chiefs fan, I was glad to see the Steelers come in. <laughs> yeah. yeah you kick, kick them all around, put Ben in retirement. Yeah. I, I, even though there's a chance, I, I doubt it'll happen, but hey, there's a chance and it, it would be something. I mean, but to you got to look at so the Patriots. Let's look at the other divisions because you're talking about wild card. So you've got the Patriots and Buffalo Bills. Those One of those two teams are going to win that division. And the Miami has a shot at the wild card. Uh, and, until Tua can actually throw the football down the field, we'll see. Good point. You know, uh, you, I, those, you, you can pretty much lock in at this point today that the Bills or the Patriots are going to win that division. Who doesn't win that division is going to be a wild card. Okay. So there's two of your now. Teams now right using there. that logic, look at the uh, AFC South. Hold on. Tennessee. Tennessee's still going to be good. Tennessee's going to be good. Uh, the Colts. The Colts are well. They got. Uh oh. Oh, I lost there you for go. a second. There we go. Yep. Um, they got Matt Ryan, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> that, that's who, true. Who else is in that division? Tennessee, Indianapolis, Jacksonville? Yeah, they're not important. They they not. Uh, and who's that. who's the other one? Uh, Tennessee, Jacksonville. Indianapolis. Oh, the Houston Texans. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, trash. Yeah. So you're going to get one out of there. Okay, you know, now that we start doing the math, yeah, we might get three guys out of the AFC West. I mean, the only other division is the uh, AFC North. Pittsburgh. Yeah, and I think you're going to get Baltimore and maybe Cleveland out of there. I think Cincinnati. I mean, and Cincinnati, don't forget Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati I don't, and, I don't think Cleveland's good enough yet. I don't know. Deshaun's there. Deshaun's a difference maker. If he plays. If he plays. Watson's a difference maker if he plays. Yeah, so it could happen. I think Pittsburgh's actually going to take a step back. I think they're finally going to start rebuilding. And Baltimore is the wild card in all this. What do you get out of Lamar Jackson? If Baltimore stays healthy, they will give Cincinnati a run for their money for that division. And that's the thing, because wasn't that the team that kept losing running backs every week? Yes, like all through preseason, and then they lost. I think Marcus Peters at cornerback and yeah. all sorts of stuff. All you know, just before the season started, you know. Yeah. If healthy, and then I, and, they will and be. And then scary. I think Lamar did get hurt, if I'm not mistaken. Lamar did get hurt. Sometime he got hurt at year. one point, yeah, because they put the other guy in, and he almost came back and beat Cleveland. Now, the 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 wild card to the wild card is what Cleveland's going to do with Baker Mayfield. Yeah, and I think that we won't know anything about that until after draft day. There's going to oh, be yeah. some dealing. Or or on draft day where they make a draft day trade to move up or something like that to get, you know, a stud player or something like that. But, you know, if he were to go to uh, Miami or something like that, that puts Miami back in because now they have a, a trigger 
to yeah. you know a guy that can throw the bomb down the field to Hill and uh, Waddle. You know, um, they're going to surprise some teams, Dolphins, but I don't think they're going to be anything to worry about. Let me throw this to out to you. Division. Let's say they send him to Pittsburgh. Doubt they would because it's a division team, but. Does that make Pittsburgh legitimate again? Who they got? The, who's catching the ball? Oh, that's right, because they lost Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, uh, and I'm going to tell you, as a Chiefs fan, I wasn't necessarily happy with that Juju signing. Why not? Because all he, what Juju is very good at, he has a – what I like what the Chiefs have done wideout-wise is they've become bigger at wide receiver – stronger with bigger catch radiuses now scantling doesn't have heel speed but he ain't far off and has a bigger a bigger catch radius than heel does the problem with that is scantling probably won't even start because they've got mccall hardman listed as the starter mccall hardman is going to be the third wide receiver you think so yeah, I'm just McCall I'm just Hardman starting is, off the season that way because Hardman knows I'm just saying, the offense. McCall Hardman is not a starting wide receiver. He's going to be the kick returner. He's not a starting wide receiver. He's no. I'm not happy with McCall. I mean, <laughs> you know, McCall. No, he's not a starter. He's definitely not a not a number one. Yeah, um, I, I don't like the way he runs your, his routes. Your, your three will be MVS Hardman and Juju. Okay, those will be the three. Um, unless, and I heard something today that the Chiefs are still looking at trying to make a trade for another premier wide receiver. They didn't say who, but, um, you know, unless something like that happens. Juju to me is if you need six yards, tough yards, third and six, you need six or seven yards, that's Mm -hmm. your guy. He's going to go across the middle. He's going to take a quick slant, but he's not going to take the top off the defense. Now, um, McCall Hardman I will say can take this, the top off. And go this ahead. is about the Chiefs in general because, you know, I've watched Andy Reid all the way back to when he coached in Philly. Mm-hmm. The best thing Andy can do is run the football. Don't go back into that we're going to pass 75% of the time thing. He did that a lot in Philly, and that's what got him into trouble. He has a shiny toy that can throw the ball. That's why he does that. Well, he had a shiny toy in Philly that could throw the ball, but not as no, yeah. Come on now, no, McNabb and Mahomes are not two in different. The same yeah, way. two different the apples and oranges, but you know, I think that this is going to make the offense evolve. Okay, and, and they have uh, Nagy back as an offensive coordinator along with the enemy. So I think having two guys in in uh, Andy's ear will be, let's run the ball a little bit more. And I agree with you. If they would have ran the ball more last year, it would have took the defense out of that cover two shell because that's the only way to break a cover two shell is to run the defense out of it. And then once you do that, you can take the top off. Now, what I'm really excited as a Chiefs fan is Mahomes without Hill. I personally think it's going to make him a better quarterback. Because last year, he was told, don't throw it down the field all the time. Let's dink and dunk. And then if you have it, throw it. Yeah. But, I mean, we're human. Our psyche is going to go, you know, Hill's down there somewhere. I mean, look at the last play of the Cincinnati game, the National Championship game. He was throwing yeah. it to Hill in double coverage. You know, Hill's down there somewhere, he'll catch it type of thing. I think this is going to make Mahomes a better quarterback in the long run. I do think this will be the year that the Chiefs do not win the AFC West. Interesting. I, I think we will take a step back. The only it, way it's, it's going It's funny, to- though, because – we have intersecting dichotomies on this. Mm-hmm. I think we both believe that Mahomes will be better now that he's lost his number one wide receiver. And we both believe that Carr will be better because he finally has a number one wide receiver. Yes. And I just think 
the competition is just it, it is caught up now unless we get a couple of stud defensive players that's going to be our weakness we still need an edge rusher we still and need a cornerback that's where i think those draft picks are going to come in handy because y'all got a ton of draft we picks. do i think we have i think they said we had like four or five draft picks in the first 150 picks or something like that you know something outlined just like that i think we picked 29 and 30 back to back and there are at a top 100 there are 14 top tier edge rushers and there are 16 top tier wide receivers out of the top 100 players okay so, so if you pick 29 and 30 that's the way to go edge rusher yeah, receiver be able or receiver edge like rusher that. yeah right but you don't know if they're going to be a, a Nick Bolton who's going to pick up and be, you know, a top tier linebacker in his first season. You don't know that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, uh, so that's why I think that that we're going to take a step back. I mean, we're not going to fall to third in the division. I don't think. I do think that the Raiders will probably win the division. I'll, I'll go ahead and say it today. Uh, you know, we have this conversation again in October, November. I may change my mind. I'm not going to uh, jinx it yet. I'm not yeah. going to jinx it. I'm just I'm I'm gonna let the preseason think, play out. I just think that they have I'll tell you what, the Raiders have the best chance, how's that, to dethrone the Chiefs in the AFC West. I think they have the, the best opportunity to do so. I don't trust the coach in San Diego or Los Angeles. I definitely don't trust Denver. I mean they just they poop on themselves. The only problem with the Raiders is sometimes the Raider just Raider. Yeah. Those, those two you know, 40-point beatdowns that Kansas City laid on us last year after we thought we'd gotten over the hump the year before just let us know we, we weren't there yet. I agree. Um, but, you know, if, if Carr plays up to his potential, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It'll be interesting, and we will definitely – we'll talk more – NFL, especially AFC West, again in future episodes, especially after the draft, we'll see oh, yeah. where we'll see where the pieces are starting to line up. Now, real quick before we close it out, <clears throat> um, tell me about a time when getting what you—I'm sorry—when not getting what you wanted turned out to be the best thing for you, much better than you expected. I'm gonna throw out a funny one for you. It's really short. I tell you, I'm, what, I'm not gonna it, get deep into it. Go um, ahead. I graduated high school and I wanted a brand new Pontiac Fiero GT because you know, class '88. That that was the car back then. Pontiac Fiero. Don't laugh, people. The GT. That was a nice looking ride. That was a small car, right? A little yeah. two door. Yeah. But the problem is. You found out later that they had problems with the, uh, the, it would get really hot. The engine would get hot because the oil pan and all that. And it was just a bad car. They end up discontinuing it one or two years later and not making it anymore. So that's what I mean. Not, not nothing too deep, just uh, something like that. And I'm so glad I didn't. I ended up getting a Mustang and it was a lot better for me. Well, mine is... I mean, I could, I could go deep with you, but since we're not going to do that, I'll go to the lighter side of it. Um, so let's see. My boys are 30 and 27, 32 and 27 right now. That's my oldest son. So when they were young, they were in karate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And dad and my father uh, was a martial arts instructor back in Emporia when I was a kid, but I never got into it. He taught me some stuff and I don't remember any of this, but I guess when I was in kindergarten or first grade, I went to school, had some cowboy boots on, kicked a couple kids in the head. My dad said, I'm never teaching you nothing else ever again. And that's pretty much how it rolled until I became an adult. Mm. That being said, uh, my kids were in karate and I was like, you know what? I want to get in to this karate and I, I want to do something with them, you know, but I couldn't join their class because it was a kid's class. And my dad's had a particular style that he was in, and I wanted that style. I wanted to be in that style. And I called two people. Um, one was just kind of like a fly-by-night, you know, type of martial arts studio. I looked at and was like, eh, you know, 
not really important. You know, the guy is just a regular old white dude. He's not no Asian, Japanese master, you know, from Shaolin temple type of thing. <laughs> um, and I realize Shaolin is Chinese for those people that are going to correct me, but you know, you get where I got. Um, but I called this and it was really, and they never called me back. The only phone call I got was from that fly by night martial arts studio. And at the mm. time I was like, well, you know, the only one that called me back, I'm going to start it. Not too happy, but you know, thankfully it, it got me to where I am now, you know, starting that met Sensei Brown, me and Sensei Brown have become huge friends, um, created my own school, my own dojo, um, you know, and I'm a fifth degree black belt now in jujitsu and Okinawa and Kempo. Some completely different than what, you know, Shirin Ru, which is what my father did. So, you know, the one time that I really wanted it, didn't get it, but got this over here, it turned out really good for me. I like that. All right. So before we close it out, I'm going to pose the question to everybody that's watching here on YouTube. Tell us about a time where you didn't get what you wanted, but it was better than what you expected. Leave us a comment. Let us know that. Again, you can also hit us up at the Two Dudes Podcast at yahoo.com. Uh, leave us notes, whether you're on the podcast platform or on YouTube. Give us a comment, like, subscribe. We really appreciate everybody. Big show. It's been a fun show today. I appreciate it. It was man. fun. I appreciate it too. Good topics and look forward to next week. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Stay positive, stay blessed, and we will see you again.